G'day people, Rodney Holder here and welcome back to Music Business Facts. If you haven't already, I'd really love to invite you over to a free video lecture I conducted with one of the most successful music entrepreneurs I know, a guy called Andy Farrow. I call him the octopus of the industry because he's got so many hands in so many different music streams and that includes management and publishing and publicity and touring and merchandise and festivals and media production and the list goes on. Anyhow, it's all free and uh, again, I'd love to invite you over to musicbusinesslecture.com where you can check out my interview with Andy here in my backyard today in beautiful sunny Brisbane and uh, you can hear got the dogs going off around me but it is actually a beautiful day so I thought I'd pull myself out of my dingy dark office and sit in the yard and enjoy the uh, the sunshine. Shush up boy, this is my faithful dog Archie here next to me. I've also started a free uh, Facebook community, which I'd love to invite you guys over to as well. Um, If you'd like to learn about making money in the music industry, as well as networking with other musicpreneurs from all around the world, then head over to the Music Industry Entrepreneurs Association. And uh, I've put a a little URL there, which you can go to. So that's uh, M-I-E-A.biz. So there's two little things, guys, I'd like to invite you over to. There's musicbusinesslecture.com, my uh, interrogation with Andy Farrow, and also my new Facebook business community over at M-I-E-A. Dot biz. Someone once said to me, um, you either have to be first, best, or different. And that, um, that, that phrase has, has stuck with me for so long because it's true. You know, you, you've got to uh, be you know, putting together the right melodies that are catchy, but you've got to also be um, you know, structuring songs that are going to be exciting and, and, um, and kind of keep the, the listener guessing. Welcome to the Music Business Facts Podcast, where successful music industry experts share their industry secrets that will help you take your music career to the next level. So, like I said to you people, I'm recording this from my backyard today. It really is a beautiful sunny day here in Brisbane, Australia. And uh, I hope wherever you are in the world that you're having a good time and that your music business is progressing along nicely. So let's get straight into today's episode. And my guest today is Mr. Rob Carroll. And Rob Carroll is the MD of a Sydney-based boutique PR and management company called Rare Finds. Now, Rare Finds aims to foster a scene within the local indie music community as well as provide unique touring opportunities for emerging artists, specifically on the East Coast of Australia. So if you're interested in touring the east coast of Australia, then I think this will be an interesting uh, episode of Music Business Facts for you. Rare Finds also specialises in digital music servicing, management, consultancy, publicity, label services, and event production. Uh, Rare Finds is also a subsidiary of Chug Entertainment. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Michael Chug is a behemoth of a player in the Australian music scene. They call Chuggy the godfather of the Australian uh, touring scene, and he's been doing business in Australia for about 55 years now. Very, very incredible. I was actually lucky enough to interview Michael Chug uh, way back in episode three. So I've put the link up to my interview with Michael Chug right back in episode three of Music Business Facts on the show notes at musicbusinessfacts.com. And if you want to have a good laugh at me, go and listen to that. I'm like... Hi, and welcome to Music Business Facts. I'm Rodney. But anyway, uh, the, the the content from Chuggy is still really, really good, so go and check that out. Anyhow, I won't muck around much longer here today. I just want to get straight into the interview, so uh, please enjoy my conversation with Rob Carroll of Rare Finds. I hope you enjoy it. And by the way, it's rare-finds.com.au if you want to check them out. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today, my guest is Mr. Rob Carroll, and Rob is the managing director of a Sydney-based boutique PR and artist management company called Rare Finds. Rob Carroll, how are you going today, mate? Hi, Rodney. I'm well, thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. Mate, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, as per usual with my guest, Rob, I've uh, just sort of given your title there. Do you want to tell my listeners a little bit about yourself personally, and then uh, tell us what you're up to in the music business these days? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, my name is Rob Carroll. Um, I live in Sydney, New South Wales, and um, yeah, I'm a massive music fan, and uh, and that's what led me to uh, my choice of career these days. Um, I started off on the Central Coast, my hometown, when I was in my early twenties, just uh, putting on events for um, you know the local community and uh, my own band and uh, friends' bands, and uh, one thing led to another, where I uh, gradually uh, found myself. Uh, in a full-time position working in the music industry, which is, uh, yeah, uh, amazing. Uh, so these days I find myself working at Rare Finds, which is a uh, subsidiary agency of Chug Entertainment, and uh, essentially the ethos behind Rare Finds is to create as many opportunities for outstanding emerging artists as possible. Um, and we do that through a variety of platforms, um, namely our uh, PR and artist management consultation service, where we work 
Um, we've acted uh, closely um, on you know, handling their press uh, at the early stages, so um, we really try and uh, make sure that we're connecting them with the right uh, you know, platforms and uh, pacemakers to help them get a really uh, good head start. Um, and, uh, yeah, and also kind of try and offer as much uh, career guidance as well and getting them set up uh, as a uh, you know, professional working artist. Um, we also, uh, three years ago, launched a uh, club night series, uh, which started off in Sydney, um, held uh, at the Oxford Art Factory, um, which uh, has now grown to Brisbane, uh, the Black Bear Lodge. And, and uh, this, the start of this year, we uh, launched in Melbourne, at Penny Black, and it's essentially we've connected the dots and we've started putting together East Coast touring uh, runs for, for young acts and basically, uh, yeah, just trying to foster a scene in each respective city and, and, and give artists a platform where they can play to a ready-made crowd that's made up of the core indie community in each respective market and also uh, industry and uh, taste makers as well. So that's essentially where we're at right now. Mate, that all sounds fantastic. There's so much to go back there and, and talk about. Let's start with <laughs> um, with rare finds. Is that is that your business? Yeah, sure. Are you or are you an employee? Um, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, the head of the division. So it's owned by uh, Chug Entertainment. It was uh, it's, the business itself has been operating uh, since 2011, uh, and was started by a gentleman by the name of Andrew Stone, who is uh, now the head of Chug Music here, which is our domestic artist management division. Mm-hmm. Um, and essentially, once uh, Andrew kind of moved down to Sydney to partner with Michael Chug in launching uh, Chug's uh, management division, uh, Rare Finds kind of got put on the shelf there because uh, they had a lot of success with some of their earlier signings. And, um, yeah, I think uh, it was around 2013, 2014 that I ended up meeting Michael and Andrew. Um, and it just so happened that our visions aligned and um, the timing was right. And um, basically, yeah, I started off in uh, late 2014 um, taking the lead on uh, Rare Finds with the blog and also our PR service. And um, from there, yeah, we've evolved uh, into uh, other areas where we're you know, dabbling in artist management and also, yeah, really uh, trying to um, take a crack with the, the Club Night series, mm-hmm. um, which is something I'm really passionate about because uh, I really believe that it's, it's got a lot of value there to add uh, to, to acts. Um, especially because I, I come from like a, the, the uh, what I call the golden era of, um, of club night parties. So uh, back when I was in my early twenties, uh, late teens, I used to you know really uh, regularly attend uh, the likes of Hot Dan and Purple Sneakers, and and I think those, those uh, you know places just really uh, have a sense of community and and give back those those uh, you know early opportunities where they can play to you know an audience that really will connect with them rather than, uh, you know, either playing to an empty room or to maybe uh, to a, a pub full of people that may not necessarily kind of, uh, you know, get what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and how does it sort of work? Do you like, is it kind of like you stack the audience? Is it like a rent a crowd sort of thing? Or, uh, you know, is Ooh, it you're just relying on popular yeah. venues on popular nights or that's what you're trying to build? Just trying to give me, get an insight into what you're doing there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think... Um, you know, somewhere like Oxford Arts Factory has got a, you know, tremendous reputation in terms of hosting, like, some of the, you know, the country's best live music and, and also, you know, a slew of international talent as well. Um, but, you know, I, I think, you know, do we have a, a ready-made crowd? From, did we have a, many, a ready-made crowd from the get-go? No, not, not at all. It's been something that we've had to build over time. And um, we still very much, you know, rely on the dance to kind of help um, make up the audience as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, um, over the three years that we've, um, we've been operating here in Sydney, we've definitely built up a, a regular clientele who are quite uh, dedicated. And, um, you know, if... One, uh, you know, achievement that we're really proud of at this point in time is uh, the fact that we've sold out every event here in Sydney uh, since we uh, flicked over from the free entry model to a ticketed uh, event, um, which is really exciting. Um, mm. And I guess it's a bit of a testament to the to work that we've, we've put in and, um, and all the support that we've got from the local community, which is great. Um, in terms of, like, uh, you know, Brisbane, like, that's uh, definitely on its way and um, something that's... Uh, We've, we've been active in the, in the market for over 12 months now and, and it's definitely um, heading towards uh, the same, uh, you know, success that we've had in Sydney and, and Melbourne, you know, completely, to be completely honest, it's early days that, uh, that we're still uh, finding uh, ourselves uh, being widely supported by a lot of uh, amazing people down there and who really believe in what we're doing and, 
and I think just the concept as a whole. And I think one really uh, other cool thing to add is that the industry itself has been really, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, positive about uh, what we're doing and, and, and received it really well because I think it kind of helps them, um, especially agents, um, where they've got those young acts that they can uh, actually put them in a place and uh, it, it kind of kickstarts their their, uh, their touring journey um, without putting too much pressure back on on the artists uh, because it could be can be quite daunting um, on those first few tours when you're, uh, you know, if you don't get that support or that festival spot, what do you do? You know, you go out there with yourself and, and it's, a, it's a little bit hit and mess, you know. Uh, yeah. So I think having something there that exists um, where we can kind of partner in with the artists and, um, yeah, like we'll work together and uh, to, to kind of help uh, maximise the attendance. And also, like, I guess, like alleviate a lot of costs for them because, you know, we're able to kind of give them reasonable guarantees, um, remove like the, the production and venue uh, costs for them and also like invest a lot of money into to the marketing and press, um, the contribution around the events as well, which is maybe something they don't have access to financially or, or you know, they just might not have the team around them at this point. But, uh, but it's all very exciting. Um, and, and I think uh, it, it's something that, yeah, I'm not only passionate about it, but I really believe in it. And, um, you know, like, I guess all I can do is keep uh, doing what I'm doing and hopefully it, it keeps growing and, and, and we keep getting the support that we're getting. And, um, and, and yeah, we can just keep helping artists. Awesome, Rob. That's it. It all sounds really good. Really, uh, you sound passionate. And, and uh, uh, I was going to say, I suppose it. You know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I imagine it helps having someone like Michael Chug in your corner who can who can have a bit of a push. With... Yeah, absolutely. Look, I mean, it's, uh, as far as uh, you know, Michael goes. He's uh, always had a, a big heart for you know supporting young Australian acts, and uh, and and that's primarily what a lot of the reason why Rare Finds exists is because you know it's giving back into the industry and. But, you know, being under this roof certainly has its advantages in terms of, um, you know, having a lot of uh, experts surrounding you um, in terms of, like, um, the, the advice you can get sometimes um, uh, and also just having that infrastructure as well mm. um, as opposed to being out there by yourself um, as a small business operator because uh, I've been in that position before and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough slog. Uh, not saying that this... This is, uh, you know, a lot easier, but it definitely has its uh, advantages um, having that network there of experts and also infrastructure where you can kind of, uh, yeah, um, plug in basically and... uh, and, and and get that assistance. Yeah, yeah, and, and I guess for uh, for anyone listening to this who doesn't know who Michael Chug is, he's uh, he's one of the sort of key industry players in the Australian music scene who's been around in the business for over fifty years. So he's a bit of a living legend, and uh, absolutely, he's always been very supportive. In my experience, he was, he was actually uh, one of my first guests on the show. So I'll, I'll link that up in the show notes to your episode <laughs> too, uh, Rob. So uh, fantastic. Yeah, he helped me get uh, get my podcast off the ground. I reckon he's one of the first guys to give me a shot. So um. And oh, is Chuggy using um, Rare Finds as some kind of development program? I imagine if you see some really kick-ass young act coming through, uh, you guys would pass it on to Chug for some kind of perhaps management deal or further deal like that. Is yeah. that? Yeah. Well, absolutely. There is a, a goal there uh, to eventually, you know, kind of, I guess, upscale um, the acts that we're working with, like um, as somewhat of an incubator. Um, but look, at the end of the day, um, right now, the intention behind it um, is just purely to kind of uh, provide, uh, you know, a, a platform there for the young acts. Uh, well, another platform, because obviously there's a, a lot of other great opportunities that exist in the country, but, it, but I'm sure you can never have enough, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, it's, it's essentially, the, the main goal is right now is just to, to try and um, help out as many young acts as possible and to put back in, because, you know, if, uh, if no one is kind of... Uh, investing back into to the grassroots and in, in our own artists and where, where are we going to be, um, you know, in the future? Like, I think it's, uh, it's, it's really has its, uh, uh, you know, rewards for, for all involved and, and, and just ensuring that we keep this, uh, you know, great music industry alive and, and, uh, and, and sustainable. Mm, no, look, very, very well said. I, I agree with everything you said. I was going to ask you, Rob, um, about what types of genres are you looking for in these club nights? Is uh, like I read on your website, it's indie, but indie to me is a bit of a generic yeah. term these days. What, what sort of acts it, are you it, looking it, for? It is a, yeah, look, it is a very broad term. Um, I mean, I guess the <sighs> <Good> question. <laughs> but look, I, I guess uh, 
We tend to be fairly eclectic in uh, the music genres that we work with, uh, and that's uh, not only within the club night, um, but also within the, the uh, artist management and PR side of things as well. Uh, we, we try and keep as open-minded as possible, but I think there just comes a point where, you know, you still need to kind of um, be cohesive with your brand at a certain point. So, I, you know, would we work with a death metal band? Probably not. Um, you know, would we work with a, a full seven-piece swing jazz band? Probably not. But, uh, you know, would we work with, uh, you know, an indie rock act or indie electronic um, to, you know, an exciting artistic folk singer? Yes. I, I mean, like, it, 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 probably the best way for me to kind of get my point across clearly is if any act that kind of was playing uh, Splendor in the Grass or Laneway, we'd probably work with them. Um, we're not so uh, invested in, in hip-hop, and that's only because, uh, you know, I, I don't uh, really, I wouldn't call myself an expert in that field. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely appreciate the genre and, and, and listen to, to a lot of the outstanding hip-hop acts, but, but I think, um, yeah, just anything that's kind of in between indie rock and indie electronic, I hope that's... Uh, kind of narrowed it down a little bit for you <laughs> yeah yeah sure and is it all Australian acts Rob or uh, like if there's anyone internationally listening to this and they wanted to sort of uh, yeah. reach out to you to maybe try and get uh, a gig in Australia um, is that a possibility yeah or? absolutely yeah. I mean like you know first and foremost um, we, we do exist to kind of put back into our Australian music industry but like um, you know recently I worked with um, a young one from the UK who's, who's been a bit of a breakout act over the last six months mm-hmm. um, which has been exciting on the PR side of things but in terms of the club night um, we hadn't yet uh, uh, you know crossed over into uh, promoting international artists but it's certainly something we'd be open to if uh, the fit was right and it all made sense mm-hmm. but um, we just 100% want to uh, continually maintain our um you know, core focus, which is really uh, supporting uh, young Australian acts and, and making sure that we're uh, you know, prioritising them with opportunities. Yep, cool. So you're building up this great East Coast touring circuit. Um, if someone was listening to this, Rob, an artist or a manager, can you give us give them any hot tips on, uh, you know, if they thought this was right for them and, and their sound, some yeah. hot tips on how they could approach you and maybe uh, get a gig or a tour? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think... Well, uh, you know, my email's always open. Um, anyone can kind of send through a submission and I, you know, really try my best to, to listen to, to everything that comes through. Um, sometimes we experience quite busy periods and might be under resourced, so, you know, there might be a bit of a delay in getting back to you. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, 100%, please feel free to reach out. And I, I guess above all things, if you, um, and, and I think this is something, you know, it would be a great bit of advice for any uh, young artist or young manager that's, um, wanting to try and you know connect as many opportunities as possible, just keep your, your emails to the point, like really concise, um, and just make it super easy for the other person on the other end to, to kind of digest that and um, and just be clear about what you want. Um, you know, sometimes I get sent uh, mini novels, um, and and it's kind of like, oh, like, oh I'm, I'm just going to flag that and come back to it. But if it's if it's something that uh, just a few sentences put together, it's like, hey, look, we're this band. Here's our song. Here's why you should care. And it's a point summary. Um, would love to be considered for this. Mm-hmm. That's uh, the perfect email for me because, uh, you know, it really helps uh, me be able to, like, uh, you know, not really think about it too much and, um, and, and probably just respond to it there on the spot. Yep. Um, and, and, I, and I think that sentiment would be, uh, you know, pretty consistent throughout the whole industry, you know. Yeah, yeah. And in your opinion, um, should they be sending you a link? And if so, which uh, platforms are you recommending artists put their stuff up? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, links are always preferred. Um, and I, you know, something like SoundCloud, Spotify, it doesn't really, as long as it's uh, something really easy that I can click on and it's accessible, um, then I'm, I'm you know, not biased to any particular platform, but I'm, I mean, I'd probably just recommend yeah, SoundCloud or Spotify. Should they bother sending a bio through or just let you judge them on the music and you'll go and check them out later if you like the, the tunes? <laughs> Look, I think it is, it, it, there's definitely it's, it, there's, there's definitely merits in, in telling a story, but I think um, the you know the main goal should be to pique someone's interest by yeah, firstly getting them over the line of the music. But yeah. um, I think everything that's probably uh, contained with a, within a bio can probably be communicated through the dot point summary as well. That's really brief yep. and just highlighting all those, those key wins and, and reasons as to why someone should pay attention and care. 
um, that's, you know, that's, that's how I try and pitch people and, and, and get things out of the line for my artists or, or whatever it is I'm peddling. Yep. Um, and it seems to work. So, and, and, and you know, I, I think it's, it's common sense, you, you think. But, but, you know, look, <laughs> maybe uh, uh, it, it's not, um, maybe it's just common sense to me. Um, but, yeah, I'd advise anyone that's uh, in that, that uh, kind of situation where you are uh, out there trying to uh, catch the attention of someone or, get something over the line is just to be, uh, you know, make it easy for the other person um, who's reading the email. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, and just kind of communicate things really clearly, concisely, and, um, and ask for what you want. Yeah, yeah. And uh, should um, it be a professionally recorded track or do you think, you know, I, I interviewed Nick Finlay the other day and he said, oh, no, that's fine, just mm. a song off the iPhone's fine. What, do you, what, are, you, what are your thoughts well, on that? Uh, I think it comes down to the type of band it is, you know. Like if it's uh, going to be a, a indie pop, like electronic pop uh, songstress, um, and she's sending me a song off her iPhone, it's probably not going to work too well within the genre, either, you know. Mm. But um, but if it's like some uh, garage punk band, um, you know, and, and they're a bit gritty, and, and, and that's like the, the kind of what they're going for in terms of their production values. And, but yeah, look, at the end of the day, as long as it sounds good um, and it, it's uh, it's applicable to what uh, lane that you're in, uh, genre-wise, if that makes sense. Yep, cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. And and you actually invite, uh, you you talked about, and I've read about that uh, Rare Finds invite tastemakers. So do you mind explaining and expanding a bit on that? Like who are these tastemakers? Are they other uh, venue promoters and booking agents and maybe perhaps label execs or who are these people, Rob? Absolutely. Well, look, you know, I think you can group, uh, there's a lot of crossover in, in that statement. Like we try and um, invite industry and uh, key media down to our events as much as possible. But I guess because we are curating lineups where a lot of the artists are uh, kind of hot and ready to go and there's a lot of attention around them already. Um, I think, um, you know, we kind of naturally attract a lot of um, that attendance as well. Like where we will just have um, you know, labels reaching out directly or they've reached out to the artists and requested a, a door spot. So I'd, I'd say it's probably a lot of it's just organic. But like, you know, for example, like the um, third birth, like Sydney Club Night, the birthday celebration we're having uh, this Saturday, um, yeah, I'll be reaching out to a lot of labels, managers, publishers, um, and also uh, a lot of people in the media space who we think it would be great to have there um, and benefit the bands. Um, so I guess, you know, I mean, from a, a tastemaker point of view, I think there's, there's a lot in this country. And um, some of my favourite uh, outlets would be any, anyone from like Pile Rats to Purple Sneakers, um, you know, and or even off the blogs like to, to the likes of FBI or people at Triple J on Earth and Triple J. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and obviously, like, you know, you've got your, your Spotify and um, Apple Music um, playlist curators as well. I think all those types of people would really can help. Um, artists at those early stages of their career, and um, and yeah, it's great to have them in the room, and, and, and even better that uh, you know we seem to be on track with the, the lineups that we're putting together on our end, where uh, they want to reach out themselves and, and come along to the gigs to to uh, check out what's happening. Mm, sounds great. And and how does the business model work, Rob? Is it, do you guys, the Rare Finds, act kind of like a, a booking agent where you take a percentage or, or do you take the whole door and then pay the act? You said you pay the acts a small uh, performance fee. Yeah. Just, I'm just sort of curious for the business model. Yeah, a- absolutely. So we, we act as a promoter. Mm-hmm. So essentially uh, we take all the risk of the show. Um, we'll pay artists a, a, you know, a set fee. Yep. Um, and, and then obviously we absorb all the other costs. We also have um, partners uh, involved with the, the night, um, Porto, Sailor Jerry, Arthur Street, Arthur Street Studios, and uh, Mountain Goat Beer. And they do financially support it, which is great because uh, it really helps us yeah, create a situation where we can obviously keep a, uh, the ticket price fairly low. Um, which so it makes it accessible for, for punters um, and then also um, ensure that we're able to pay the bands reasonably well like to the level that they're at um, and remove a lot of those overheads um, that they would normally have um, such as marketing and um, graphic design and uh, you know, logistical uh, overheads, mm-hmm. um, production, venue hire. I mean, like, you know, and all that stuff in the end. But, you know, there's also other things that we... Uh, 
bring to the show as well, being a club night, or like you know, being like photographers and DJs, which helps add, add to the vibe, but also um, you know, photographers are great. It gets the uh, the artists a, a little bit of extra content as well. Um, so yeah, you know, it's um, it's essentially just us acting as a promoter um, and ensuring that we can um, try and create the most favourable situation for the artists as possible um, for where they're at at that current stage of their journey. Mm, it just sounds awesome, mate, because uh, as most people know, well, not all artists, but a lot of artists these days uh, are going to really grow their fan base through uh, developing a live following. And uh, like you said, it's bloody hard when you're starting out with so many artists and bands out there. So, yeah, again, it sounds like a great service for you guys that you're offering. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, you're, you're at, obviously at the coalface doing this. What are your thoughts uh, on the Australian, you know, indie music scene or the Australian music scene in general these days? I know that's a big statement, but... Uh, how are no, you yeah. Well, I guess, yeah. I, I guess at the grassroots uh, level where I, I work, um, I think we're in a really good spot. You know, it, it just uh, never ceases to amaze me, like um, how much you know the bar is continually lifted and, and how consistent that is too. You know, there's, there's some really exciting artists out there at the moment getting around and, and doing um, you know some incredible things on a global level as well, mm-hmm. um, which is just tremendous. I mean, you know. It's, uh, the age of the, the internet, I would see, uh, assisted with that. But, uh, but the fact that, you know, you, you see a, a bunch of young Aussie artists competing there on a global level and absolutely smashing it, um, it's, it's, you know, I, I think we're in a really, uh, yeah, advantageous position um, for the future of our industry. And it'd be exciting to see over the, the next uh, few years these artists come through the ranks and, and continue to, to grow and, and, and become, you know, uh, the next... Uh, that will uh, hopefully, you know, stand up and, and be someone that we remember for um, you know, a great uh, period of time. Mm, absolutely, and, and I like how you said how with the. Uh with the, with the fact that there are so many artists these days that, you know, you're, you're seeing the bar raised, um, you know, I've seen mm. it in, in, in a couple of different genres. But, yeah, I think due to the, the sheer fact that so many people now can be a musician and, and release their own music that, uh, I mean, you, you, have to be, you have to be good, but you've also got to have something else. What are, what are some of the, the traits that you see, Rob, that these uh, artists that get your attention? Obviously, good songs, good performances. I mean, yeah. for instance, things like Image and uh, you, we mentioned Story before. Uh, what are some of the traits that you think uh, an artist needs to break through these days, Rob? Look, it's always going to be that song. Um, as cliche as that answer is, it's true. Like, you know, that's what, we're, what music's about, isn't it? Yeah? Um, so I, I, I think as far as um, what makes, uh, what, what puts up my ears in terms of um, uh, a, a new and exciting and known act, um, I, I just think, uh, yeah, look, <sighs> such a broad um, there's just so many things to consider but I guess one being originality um, mm-hmm. I, I, someone once said to me um, you, you either have to be first best or different and that um, that, that phrase has is, is stuck with me for so long because it's true you know you, you've got to uh, be you know putting together like melodies that are catchy but you've got to also be um, you know structuring things that are, uh, songs that are going to be exciting and and, um, and kind of keep the, the listener like guessing um you know, things that are formalic, like, tend to uh, kind of bore me, um, which mm-hmm. I'm sure they do a lot of people. Um, so I think, you know, when it comes to, like, uh, an artist and the way that they kind of harness their uh, dynamics and structuring and, um, and and keep things, like, really interesting, keep me on the edge of the seat, yeah, that's something that really, like, um, that I highly value as a, a music listener. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's, like, originality is a big one. Um, just really pushing the envelope and trying to, to kind of do things um, differently and and and, and uh, putting your own spin on it. I think and, and I think you can kind of hear that when you're listening to to uh, a track that uh, connects. Is like you know, if uh, someone has really spent a lot of time and and are uh, being honest about what they're doing. Um, well, I think when people try to uh, start um, sounding like something in particular, I think it's easy to kind of pick up on. Um, and you can kind of see right through it. I think. And I think the kids are that clever these days as well. They'll, they'll really know if it's transparent or not. So I think it just pays to to really, um, you know, work uh, as hard as you can in terms of trying to develop um, your own sound and, and just trying to, um, yeah, come up with the best work that you can in terms of, uh, um, you know, uh, 
really well thought out structure, um, um, dynamics, and um, and you know, catchy melody. That, that's, I guess that's what gets me. Yep, that's good. And and, and let's let's face it, uh, Rob, you're one of these tastemakers. You're one of these gatekeepers. So uh, it's great. Yeah. It's, it's great hearing that <laughs> from you. So. <laughs> Well, well, you are yeah, because cool. you know you, you've. And this is what I love about the the music business and entrepreneurship in general. You know, you're working with this company that's providing this great opportunity, uh, and you're doing it because you love music yeah. and you're passionate about it, as you've mentioned. But uh, uh, as we all know, and with my show, Music Business Facts, you got to uh, you got to somehow try and at least eventually find a way to pay the bills, don't you? And, and to and to make some cash from it. So I think everything that you mentioned yeah, exactly. is. Is going to help uh, a lot of people listening to this to, uh, you know, just to just to think about and how they're going to break through. You know, I often say for every artist that sends me a track, there's you know that's it's good, it's bad, it's ugly, whatever it is. But there's there's going to be another thousand bands or, or artists that are doing you know a very similar thing, and they're all going for, you know, they're all vying for that attention, whether that be of you or of Chug or the label or the other promoter or the support act or whatever it might be. So, yeah, I think that yeah, was, absolutely. Mm, but I think, you know, music's always subjective as well. So just because I don't particularly like something doesn't mean it's uh, not good. And I think that's, you know, that rule applies to, to everyone. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but, yeah, I guess, like, you know, uh, key takeaways from that in terms of what I look for in a song, it's you know, original, um, you know, it's real. Um, and uh, there's something, like, that I can kind of get around because it's, it's enjoyable to listen to. Mm. And I'd add to it just off the back of what you were saying, and rejection's part of the of the process, isn't it, Ari? Uh, I think yeah. that, you know, musicians, you've, you've got to have pretty thick skin, and I always say as soon as you get up on a stage or release a track somewhere, somebody's going to say something probably nasty or derogatory towards you, and you've just got to be able to, to cop that, as well as copying, you know, lots of lots of no's and lots and lots of emails that go unanswered. Mm. So that's just a part of the journey. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. We try to be as uh, constructive with our, our feedback as possible, and even if it isn't the right to rare find um, and we feel like there's someone else um, that might align a little bit better, then we, you know, we try and help as much as we can, or if we can kind of give any kind of feedback and, on how the artist might be able to improve, then we can. We're happy to do that, but you know, we'd never necess- never be nasty about it. That's for sure. We always try to remain as encouraging as possible because you know people are really exposing, um, you know. They're, they're hard, like they're everything to the world in terms of um, what it comes to songwriting, you know, like it's a it's a very personal thing, and, um, and so uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's it's good to be constructive, but uh, also uh, mindful not to be uh, too uh, too brutal. <laughs> too yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's you know, it's a it's a good attitude to have because uh, there's plenty of other people out there that are going to tell you how shit you are or how how they could do better. Yeah. But, <laughs> so, Rob, is there anything else that I haven't asked you today that uh, you'd like to either address or talk about or promote that what you're doing and you know helping young artists uh, build up their their live performance skills and their and their audience? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I, I think um, just if there's one takeaway from this is I hope that people can get out there and. Um, you know, go, go and support it. Uh, young acts um, that are playing in small venues um, because I think uh, that's when they, that support is most vital um, to help them get to that next stage in their career. Um, so uh, if, if you can, um, maybe have a look at the gig calendar this weekend and, uh, and see who's playing around town and uh, get yourself out there and maybe even buy a T-shirt. Well, Rob, you're the uh, managing managing director. It's a mouthful of rare finds. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the show, mate, and thanks for doing such a uh, a great job. Do you do you come to all of the events, or are you just um, booking them down in Sydney? Um, I you know attend about ninety eight percent of the Sydney ones. Uh, sometimes I have to skip out for a wedding <laughs> or, or something else. Um, but uh, as far as like Brisbane and Melbourne goes, I mean, you know, I'll uh, every couple months I'll try and drop by. Um, just to kind of check in with our local teams and how they're going and, or if it's for a special event um, of some sort but uh, essentially we've got some great teams that work on the ground in Brisbane and Melbourne um, that kind of handle that for us um, on a regular basis Cool, cool well next time you're in Brisbane mate uh, look me up and uh, we can hopefully catch up and I can come and check out some of your uh, your new fresh talent that you're bringing us Absolutely mate I look forward to it Robbie. All right, Rob, thanks for your time, mate, and uh, take care, buddy. Thank you. You've been listening to the Music Business Facts Podcast. For more essential music business tips and information, visit musicbusinessfacts.com.